Hi, my name is Logan, and this is Crackle Toon TV, my new channel. Right here I have my 2016 Ford Focus ST. So, uh, basically, here's what's going on. Basically, I bought this car about a couple months ago, and uh, I decided to put bucket seats in, but I've never done it before, so I watched a lot of, like, videos and stuff, and there, it's a lot of work. You have to buy, like... The seat, the bracket, the sliders, and you gotta wire around a whole bunch of like airbag sensors and stuff. So, as you can see here, I already kinda put the driver's side in because um, I wanted to make sure that everything fit and everything was working. The reason I didn't go ahead and do the passenger side is because I wanted you guys to come along with for the ride, and because the passenger side is a little bit more complicated because there's a sensor in here that you have to take out that basically basically it lets the car know that somebody is sitting in the passenger seat so if we get in a wreck it'll put off both airbags but if it's just me and nobody's on that weight pressure sensor then it won't set off the passenger side it'll just set off mine which is a good thing because you don't want to set both airbags off if you're the only one in the car because then it's just a waste of time and money and you're gonna have to spend more time and money to get a new one put in so yeah basically that's the extra bit you got to do with the passenger side and it took me quite a bit to put the, the driver's side in so I just decided I was like it's late I'm tired let me go take it for a cruise see how it feels and yeah so basically that's how this is gonna work I'm just going to basically video me taking the stock seat out and all the wiring harness and sensors and all that and then putting them onto the new bucket seat and installing the new bucket seat and putting those resistors in to get the airbag light to go out I was going to wait to make this video until I got my harness bar and harnesses but those are not going to be here till beginning of next week and I need to get a video out so I just decided I'll do two separate videos because that would make it quite long too so this video kind of an intro and me installing the bucket seats and then the next video I will install the harnesses and harness bar and yeah so that's how that's gonna be let's get right into it but before I start putting the other bucket seat in I just thought I'd go over what seat I have so as you can see it's NRG these are the NRG Prisma neon green edition they cost about three hundred and sixty dollars for one so it's about 780 for two and these are all velcro there's some pockets right there to keep I don't know I don't use them but you can put whatever you want in there they're really nice really comfortable very fit seats then there's the bracket you had to buy a bracket and the slider and all that basically I spent probably like 1500 to 1800 after taxes on everything both seats both brackets both slider sets and then the harnesses and harness bar I'm not sure why those are taking so long they're all coming from the same place but sometimes especially right now it's really hard to get things on time and stocks and everything are low with certain types of things so I don't know but the good news is they'll be here sometimes next week so by next week we should be able to put the harness bar and harnesses in and yeah so then it'll all be complete and all be finished and we'll do away with the stock seat belts but for now that's what I'm using but also I just want to admire the backs of these seats they have like this rainbow flaky like design I fell in love when I seen them and I thought I just had to have them so I went and I bought them but anyways without further ado let's get right into taking the stock seat out so basically to get the seat out there's four bolts two in the front one on the side and there's one on the back you're gonna need in this car anyway you're gonna need a 5 8 socket so basically now what you're gonna do after you get all four of the bolts out is the seat is obviously gonna be loose because there's no bolts holding it in so you just want to make sure that the slider is all the way back like that and then just pull back on it and as you can see this is the main harness connector so basically now what you're gonna do is there's these body pins I already pulled this one out you want to pull this down so you can get to the main harness basically this is 
what you're, you're gonna need to get to. You wanna be real careful, you don't break any of the wiring. And this is a pain to get open, so yeah, basically this is where you grab a screwdriver. So you just wanna stick this screwdriver down in here and then pop it loose like that. It doesn't take much, just a light, light pop like that and then you open it and then you be real careful. It's gonna be hard because this has been in here since factory. So just wiggle in the middle and slowly pull and eventually it comes apart. And there's your main, your main connector that lets the computer in your car know that everything in this seat is secure and plugged in. And this seat actually supposedly is a lot harder because of the airbag sensors and I think that's what this is right here. Yeah, that's exactly what this is right here. So you gotta be really careful with that sensor and you gotta transfer it to the new one. I mean, you don't have to, but it's recommended. So that way, because otherwise, if there's a passenger in this seat and you don't have that hooked up to your new bucket seat, their airbag in the dash right here, it's not gonna go off. And so therefore, they're gonna get really hurt. And you don't want that. You wanna stay away from any possible injuries even though you're gonna get hurt in a crash most likely but uh, don't crash I hope you don't crash but if you were to this would be why you, this is important and now I see why mainly people just stick with getting the driver's side I wanted both though because it looks better but yeah this is starting to be a real pain I don't recommend doing this for both sides anyway just because it's a lot more difficult and make sure you know what you're doing I really didn't I watched a ton of YouTube tutorials first and yeah so anyways now that we have the main plug unplugged I'm pretty sure yeah this is the main plug right here so we just have to unhook this from here from the the from the actual stock passenger seat and then the seat is free to take out and then we'll take it out and go over there and take all the wiring and harnesses and all that stuff off of the stock seat so we can transfer it to the new bucket seat. So yeah, I'll uh, see you over there. So I decided before I take all the wiring off of the seat now that I got it out, I am going to vacuum the floorboards that way all this nasty crap that was underneath the seat will not be there. When I put the new seat in, so yeah. Now we have the seat over here. We're going to take all of the little body pins off that hold all the cable and wiring and harness in. After we get everything off, then we're going to work on putting it all on the new seat. Because we gotta figure out how to get this little airbag sensor that lets the car know that there's a passenger so if we get in a wreck it won't blow both of them only one if it's needed but you, some people would do away with it but you really need that because otherwise it's not going to let the car know that there's a passenger if there is a passenger and that means that if you get in a wreck their airbag won't go off and they'll probably die and you'll be responsible because you put aftermarket parts in and they didn't get the airbag sensor to work right so yeah you don't want that so I will see you after I get all this harness taken off and we'll go to put all of it on the new seat and install the new seat. So yeah. Okay, here we are finally. 
took me about an hour to uh, take all the wiring off of the passenger seat. The reason it took around an hour is because the passenger seat, like I've said many times before, is much more complicated because not only do you have to take the harness with all the wiring and stuff for the seat belt and all that, but you also have to take this thing out, which is called, it's like a water weight thing. You, uh, it's in your passenger seat, so it sends a signal letting the car know that somebody's sitting there. So if you get a wreck, both airbags go off. Otherwise, if it's just you, yours will only go off. You don't have to put it in there, but it's recommended because otherwise you're going to be responsible for killing somebody or just getting them really injured, but most likely they'll die because that's really rare that people survive a crash without an airbag. Anyways, but um, this is what the bottom looks like now. Basically, I had to take, after I got all the wiring off, I had to undo this and pull this spring thing out to get it out, and I got it all put back in, and now it's good to go. So now, I am going to go ahead and put the new wiring and stuff into the new seat and install it and I'll show you what I did after I finish installing it and then yeah we'll go from there okay so here's my passenger bucket seat as you can see I have the water weight sensor from the passenger seat that came out of the stock passenger seat this allows your car to know when someone's sitting in the passenger seat because the weight of their body pushes down on this water and it sends it down to this sensor you can see hanging right there it just feeds right down through this hole where the five point harness comes up and there's still room to put a five point harness if you want to bad news is these foam pads that you sit on velcro to this this uh, bottom area right here so this honestly looks like it was meant to be put there it fits perfect and the tube goes down below so the sensor is installed to the seat bad news is these won't velcro anymore because this is in the way of velcro. They're still a little bit on the sides, but it's not going to be able to touch much to hold. So I have these little velcro strips. What I'm doing is I'm putting a few on this plastic piece the over top of the water sensor. And then I'm laying the foam padding part of the seat on top and squishing it down because there's velcro on the bottom that attaches to this velcro. So velcro will attach to these and keep it to where it'll be attached. It's not going to be perfect, but it'll be better than nothing most of the time. I'd rather just have the seat cushions somewhat velcroed than not velcroed at all and mess with the sensor and all that. But then it'll be safe. So yeah. As you can now see, both bucket seats are properly installed, bolted down, and all the harnesses are hooked back up. All that's left to do. Look closely, you'll see two yellow cables. Those are what were the the old stock airbag plugs that plugged into the airbag that is up inside the stock ST seats somewhere in there I'm not sure where I have to wire resistors into those to get the airbag light to go out and then stuff that back under the seat and then they will be officially done so they're pretty much done just have to wire those resistors in tape them up stuff it under the seat and it'll be good aftermarket bucket seats will be installed and all the seat belt and airbags will be bypassed and all that and yeah the one thing I did notice is if you look right here this doesn't stay on with that velcro I put on. The reason is because it's two different types of velcro. I noticed it was too late. I mean, it stays on enough to like, when someone sits in there, it'll be fine. I'm gonna have to get some of the thinner material uh, velcro, like the one that comes on these seats. And then when I get that, I'll get it in a few days or whatever. I'll uh, just take off the old ones and put it on, and then it'll stick better to where it's not gonna slide around and fall off. But anyways, yeah. They're both installed, they're finally done, after days and hours of work. So yeah, I'm just gonna wire those resistors in, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it for the installation. Well, I just finished soldering the resistors into the airbag connector where it plugged into the stock seat airbags, and I turned on the ignition to make sure that the airbag light went out, which, as you can see right now, if you look right there very closely, the airbag sensor would be right there and it it's not there anymore, it, it turned off. And yeah, it turned on for a second because whenever the car turns on, all the lights kind of flash and then it sits there and then it went out and if it was gonna come back on, it would've came back on. But it didn't, that means it's all good. So then after 
I made sure it was all good. I taped up the resistors and the harness to get it all to where none of the wires or resistors will touch and I tucked them back underneath the aftermarket bucket seats to where all the seats are mounted, all the wiring. I, every, everything is done. The bucket seats are mounted to the base brackets and the sliders where they can move and everything. All of the wiring from the stock seats has transferred over to the aftermarket bucket seats. It's all plugged in, all the airbag and seatbelt wiring is resisted with resistors to where it thinks it's still plugged in so I don't get any lights in the dash. And it's all good and tucked in underneath. They're all bolted down and ready to be used. All that's left to do is next week get my harness bar and harnesses and then install the harness bar and harnesses and get rid of the stock seat belts. And yeah, so that'll be the next video. But uh, I just thought I'd show you the airbag thing really quick. So, as of right now, if you look right there, it says passenger airbag off. And if I was to get in, it takes a minute but to let the sensor be notified. But if you, see, now it says passenger airbag on so that sensor thing that you see me install into this passenger bucket seat that's what that does it lets the car know someone's sitting here so if you get in a wreck both of them will go off if that's on but one yours will go off if it's off so it's just a safety thing to not blow both airbags if you don't need both of them and yeah so that's that I'm gonna go for a small drive and let you know how I think it feels while I'm driving and how comfy they feel Today is actually a new day. I decided to just go to sleep last night after I finished putting the seats in. I was gonna go take it for a test drive and test out how they feel and talk about how I like them and what the differences are. But I decided to wait till today because it got really dark out and you wouldn't really be able to see much. So I decided to wait, plus my camera was about to die. So I charged my camera overnight. So yeah, it's been overnight, so now we should have a fresh cold start for you, so I'm going to get that on video, the cold start of my car. And then we'll go drive around and I'll talk to you about the differences and how I like the seats and what I don't like about them, if there is anything that I notice. And... I feel like I'm more coupled and more like secure in these seats. In the stock seats, you can move all over the place, which it's a stock seat, so that's normal. But that's kind of the only bad part is that it's a little more snug than stock seats, so there's not much movement, which is okay. It's just, it gets annoying sometimes, but it's something to get used to. Um, the stock seats had a good cushion in them. These definitely have some good cushioning too. But after a while, like an hour or so, these start to feel like they're faded even though they're not. So it makes you like it just makes your body ache. But if you're driving for an hour Normally, I drive for that long because I just like to cruise around, but on a normal daily basis, you're probably not going to drive that much at a time, like in one period of time unless you're going on a road trip. The only downside that I have seen so far would be getting in and out. Not so much getting in, but getting out, it's a little harder because you're in a bucket seat, so you're like coupled. So you kind of have to like pull yourself out and then around the seat. You can't just slide out like the old seats. But <laughs> it's not that huge on the downside. Like it's a little difficult, but it's something to get used to. I mean, I just got them put in, so it's definitely gonna 
time to get used to them. But other than that, yeah, they feel really comfortable. They're really soft. And I really, really like them. I'm excited to get the harness for our harnesses. <laughs> You don't really need them because I have the stock seat belts, but I already ordered them and in my opinion harnesses look way better with um with bucket seats. Like if you get bucket seats you gotta get harnesses. It doesn't look good without them in my opinion. But some people don't want to spend that extra money and I don't blame them. Because it's not it's not a cheap thing to do, but I definitely recommend it. Plus, you'll be more secure and snug if you were to roll the car. You in this seatbelt, you'd probably fly out. But in harnesses, you would be secure and stabilized, and you're not going to move. So you'll be more in the seat, secure. Yeah, that's pretty much the ups and downs of the seats, and what's the differences, and what I like more about each one. Uh, but yeah. Stars come and go. It's the light within my reach, not as distant as it seemed. Dreams are moments, night is long. Gone too far for us to see. We move on and live it as it is. But once in a while, let the reminiscence brighten this melody. I think that pretty much does it for this video. Subscribe if you haven't, and feel free to leave a like and comment down below. Until next time, here on Crackle Tune TV, I'm Logan, and thanks for watching. Peace.